Hello everybody and welcome back to Train Simulator 2016. Today we're going to be driving this lovely class 86 on a Anglia railway service all the way down into Liverpool Street Station. We've been... This is a Ashon Powerhouse um, scenario. As you can see the uh, push-pull operation that used to exist on this uh, using these uh, class using the uh, DBSO coach, uh, Mark II coach. As we notice, we are just waiting for our passengers to finally aboard onto our service. Uh, let's go and have a little read on the notes. Turns around and says, hello driver, first things first, load and unload passengers here at Ipswich. And in uh, readiness for your departure, time of 0737. You will then run non-stop to London Liverpool Street where you are booked to arrive at 0844. Enjoy the run on the cloudy on this on this cloudy yes, July morning. So you can see we're just gonna be pick up passengers here at Ipswich. Uh, we go via Shenfield and not stopping and then pick up passengers on Liverpool Street Platform 10. So we're just waiting, off, finished waiting for the last bit of loading passengers and then we'll make our way along this journey to Liverpool Street. Um, just hit the guard's whistle. Take away this hub, and we are going to be running. Uh, just using the little, little thing we can see at the top, but uh, as you can see at the top, telling us about our engine information. But we are going to be running off pretty much knowing the route, so no hub to be really displaying the signals or anything like that. So this could be an enjoyable journey. It could also be one of those trips where we may fail jump a red light. <coughs> yeah, I thought I'd drive this um, uh, this service. And as you can see, it's an uh, Armstrong Powerhouse uh, scenario, AP40. Just shut us off because, as I remember, the speed limit coming out of the platform was only 25 miles per hour. We should have cleared that now to the 30 mile per hour. Wait till we just get to the other end of the tunnel and we'll start applying the power again. That'll shut us off again. Don't want to go over the top. Wait for the 70 ball coming up, which is just coming up now. Right now we can accelerate up to the 45 and of course the 70 is take us a while to get to the 45 so pretty much heading straight for the 70 mile per hour but yeah I thought we have a nice little rundown on this uh, route again uh, the uh, Great Eastern Main Line uh, which comes which is a dovetail uh, route <coughs> excuse me which you may also remember I've done videos on before uh, where we ran along the uh, May flower line um, going to Harwick which is a just chained add-on 100 mile per hour coming up pretty much now so we'll start speeding this engine up now up to power um, yeah as you remember it, I've done a few videos of that so back on this lovely route as always Like I said, I thought we'll have a nice little run. I thought I'd have a run in this beautiful livery back in the old days. And uh, I believe it would be probably 1995, 1996 coming around. Pretty much around that era as we're running this scenario. So you should see a variation of different colours of the old uh, British Railways. 
and coming into privatisation. As you can see, at the back of the train is our uh, DB uh, is our uh, DBSO uh, at the back. Suddenly, say you can't drive that on this. Uh, the actual power has put it in, but it's not. You can't drive it. It's not a drivable unit, which is a shame. It hasn't got a cab. Good for a, uh, AI to drive and all like that, and to have it on your services. But yeah, it's an undrivable. Can't drive it unless they've updated it now. But I don't think they have. Uh, I believe it's still the uh, same as it is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this little rundown. I thought I'd let you all uh, enjoy it with me, as uh, you know a bit. I do like it when it's kind of like when it's kind of like back in the old days, um, very much the old liveries. As you can see, we're driving using an 86 now. Today, if you go along this line, it's you have a class 90 with Mark three coaches and a DVT on the end, and of course, this is uh, a class 86 with a load of Mark twos. And a uh, loaner bag twos and a DB SO on the back. So quite different from what had gone before, or what is now. And uh, of course, it's quite fitting. Uh, it was only the last start, end of last week. Uh, they were saying there was an all news out saying that the uh, new trains. Uh, intercity wise uh, running on this line uh, which will then replace the class 90 with the uh, Mark 3s and DVT to a nice for a new train that's made by Bombardier uh, so it's quite fitting that we're running on this line that will be modernised that, that would be brilliant wouldn't it and that would be nice to see the new trains it'd be sad to see the class 90 the locomotive all running gone uh, and pretty much EMU running all the way through um, you know that is going to be a sad sight to see uh, well not it's a sad sight to see locomotive all running I suppose uh, but he, you know he's modernised into the future so you can't really complain too much I look forward to when that starts coming out that they make the um, they'll make that to be a make it so you can uh, run on that on the um, on this line as well uh, but that could be interesting to see if this line changes much from um, now to it is then or if it remains the same and just have a newer trains running along these lines that can hit those 100 mile per hour speed limits quicker and run along here at a much smoother pace you know, it'd be interesting to see how it goes Um, it's convenient that we're also using a Arshon powerhouse um, uh, scenario as it was only recently where he brought out the uh, uh, DMU um, class 205 I believe it is pretty much the thumper uh, and a beautiful thing it is got beautiful sounds very uh, when I've seen like actually seen the write up about it and seen like little sneaky clip videos that you've been putting up of it as it being made. AWS, I'm going to slow down for the 70 mile per hour. Now, you can see the river opening up in the corner there on the left. See the boats start going inland now. We will. A 3 2 1 coming along. A 
accidentally put uh, brakes on too harsh there. I didn't notice what key I had. So I'll speed us back up. So like I said, it's only a 70 mile per hour speed restriction through here at Manga Tree. And then he blew our engine up then. So that was not a good wise thing to do. Let's let it go back down. Because the line coming up in a sec on our left uh, goes away onto the on the Mayfair line to Harwick. Uh, <clears throat> of course, we're going to be going onto the right uh, line. We're going to keep going, going around the curve to the right uh, to go through Manga Tree Station. You'll see a line then coming from uh, a different another line from the Mayfair line, uh, the Mayflower line um, from. Um, Harwick and all, uh, so it has direct links into London and everything, and to Mangatree Station. There's normally a shuttle that go, because they can do shuttles as it has a uh, bay platform at Mangatree Station, so they can run from there uh, back along. As we're talking about that line, we can see the line now coming in on the left, that is from Mangatree to head to continue on through, to continue on down into the bay or onwards in along the reverse to London Liverpool Street. Mangatree Station as we go through. Non-stop of course. Speed us back up still coming at just a, just shy of 60 miles per hour now. Uh, speed limit's gonna go raise back up to hundred miles per hour so we've navigated that curve quite nicely. Nicely now, up to the hundred, and put the power all the way back on to run along. And we'll put it as full power, so it doesn't affect. Class 40, 47s there on containers. So yes, we, we should have a quite a nice, smooth, interesting little run down now. Uh, no hiccups or problems, uh, I do hope. I believe there's, there's a point in the scenario where it recommends uh, at Shenfield there'd be a message that come up that recommends you to save, uh, quit, and then come back in. Uh, we will probably do that as I have because the idea is so you don't uh, use up too much memory on your graphics cards because that could also make the uh, uh, the game to dump all its files and you don't want that to happen or you will lit, you would struggle to play on. Very good Armstrong Powerhouses scenarios. They're one of the best ones to drive. I, I do recommend them all the time for scenarios for sure. And their sound packs and everything. And you know, it's a lot of my and even their content. Um, if, I think people have noticed I use them quite a lot. Uh, a lot of my add-ons and everything. And, uh, all right. If you do add everything up and buy everything up once, it will cost you a bit. Even if it's only five pound here. And pound here it can build up uh, but quite often he does do uh, some I think there might be one coming up soon but the bank holidays uh, weekends um, he does do things uh, pretty much where you can uh, get products of his for like 30% or 40% off which to be honest is not too bad you can't really grumble at as that is very good discount and you can enjoy running the um, you don't have to pay the year for what you get and yeah it's well worth to if you do want certain things and all uh, it depends on how much you want it like now and there are certain um, add-ons uh, train add-ons uh, locomotive add-ons even or EMU add-ons on this game that I can tell you now the sounds sound actually terrible but thankfully there's people like our Sean Powerhouse out there that will give you a good sound pack that you, it, right, it does cost but will give you a good sound pack that in the end of the day will 
give you something that's more realistic of what the train sounds like and like what the sounds they come with. So yeah, they, you know, like I said, there's pros and cons about it all, but like I said, I do enjoy having some wonderful sound packs with them, and I love the scenarios, the detail they go into the scenarios. Um, I, it's, to be honest, it's kind of like what I love doing myself. When I make scenarios, I go into so fine detail, um, which is so important, I find, that, you know, I know from him it's really, obviously, do really well into the details. Another person that's good on details is um, uh, Darren Porter, uh, otherwise it's DPS, DPS website as well uh, where you can get free reskins. Uh, we've got a few people you know go use this websites that and post their reskins on there and you'll find quite a lot of people on especially if you download stuff from um, UK Train Sim use a lot of download like reskins from, from there the the TPS, the TPS uh, website and all but yeah down port himself um, scenarios he makes are very detailed and very, you know, very good things to go with. Um, you can't uh, moan at all about any of it. Right, we got the uh, warning board now of a 90 mile per hour speed restriction. Let's take the power off for the moment. Now, there we go, that's a 90 mile per hour. So we slow down to the 90 to go through Colchester Station. You can see the line now appearing on the uh, left from Colchester Town and other branch lines. I don't know where the other ones go to, to be honest. I should look up. I know the old MSTS uh, Microsoft Train Simulator by making tracks had the routes that were that continued on. They even had the uh, line to uh, Southport, I believe, Victoria, uh, where it comes off from uh, Shenfield. And that one, I used to love driving that. On using those, the class uh, 3 2 uh, ones, which you can see right beside us in the platform. So flying through the platform now. As you can see, it's only 90, can it go up to 100? I believe you. I thought it was just making sure that I was not breaking the speed limits. And as the 100 is not far away, I'm going to start putting that throttle back on, building myself up again into these notches. Just gone right past the 100 mile per hour board, and I'm going to put it back into full, and let's get back up to power. So we can enjoy the run along now, back up to speed, uh, to our lovely speed. I'm not too sure how fast this journey is. I should have actually looked on uh, Wikipedia. There should normally be a thing around well, in the cab uh, around here that would say like how fast that we're limited to. Uh, but uh, there's nothing in here that says so. So, uh, but I know there was a lot of variations of the class 86, uh, and I guess in most of them have different types of speeds and everything so it's one of those things they've just made it a generic cab to continue on through so uh, each one will change um, but I believe it's about 100 miles per hour but we're nowhere near getting that uh, on this because um, we're only just cruising at nine. 90 at the moment, but 91 and 92 or 93 earlier on when we had to break. So, um, so it's, like I said, it's not nowhere near getting where you would be. It's n yeah, like it's nowhere there. It's not even behind the visor. As you can see, this is very, very plain. Nothing, nothing stands out saying this is the speed, um, maximum speed. So. 
I just run away, run along as I, so I can make it go as fast as it can, fast as it can go, and also like not over go over the speed limit as the uh, the line speed. Uh, that's quite important. Uh, let's not break the speed limit of the uh, the line. Don't forget this route is based in 2012, because roughly, because uh, you have the Olympic Park when we go past um, Stafford, um, and that's quite interesting to see. Um, but of course, back in these days, uh, when this now would be made, that that would nowhere near was there at the time, so which is a big railway depot, pretty much. You know. Uh, so, yeah, that would be a bit unrealistic for these days. Um, I do look forward to uh, um, the, uh, the wagons uh, and Armstrong Powerhouse again, joining forces again to make the Class 313, which is uh, another EMU that is used quite a lot on this route as well. Uh, we'll just add another EMU that will run along here than just the um, 321. Um, especially in the age of this scenario space, you would have had them both really running quite a lot along this line and not the uh, not just all just uh, 321s, because bear in mind most of the 321s at this time were very much running on the West Coast main line more than outposted to this line so much. So. There are, they were a few, but like I said, they a lot on the West Coast Main Line. As that was also a very prime, very important route for them to run on. Of course, today uh, you don't really see any um, three, two, ones on that route. Um, there are a few, uh, but not every train. Because of course, now today we have the. 350s that run on there in London Midland uh, livery. And of course, back in those days, it would have been uh, Natrix South East uh, colours or in privatisation uh, in Silverlink. As of course, the time is gone past 7 o'clock in the mornings. We are sounding the horns at the uh, W boards. Uh, um, that's because remember there's also if it was late night or, or early morning ones because you have the uh, curfew um, sound on the horn so but as it is not in those curfew times we can sound the horn and warn people as are approaching to crossings but yes this is a lovely lovely <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, a uh, lovely summer's day pretty much outside as we go along. Another class uh, 321 coming the other way. In Network South East colours, as you can I do like the old Network South East colours. Of course, that's celebrated 30 years of the Network South East colours uh, this year. I should have really done something about that. I'd done a scenario in Network South East Colours, but I, I thought of it and I just never got around to doing it, which is a bit of disappointing, a bit of a regret of mine. Uh, maybe I'll try and get around to do something um, sometime. Uh, it would be good, just as the a very nice colour and livery that they used to be in. A bit worrying when you see the amber light on the other side, you think, oh, is that our light or is it uh, the, the reverse line? But it, of course it's just the reverse line, it's, our light is remaining green. Uh, it's sometimes hard to see in the shadows of the trees. Another uh, 86 coming down on a freight, on a containers. We make our way through this station. Pretty much as the express, express passenger service along. 
basically as you also see, we're running at a lovely speed of 92.5 miles per hour. Uh, you may also hear like a bit in the background, like a bit of background noise. Uh, you may also pick up my fan a little bit, just a hum in the distance uh, for the mic, because it's very hot and humid night. Because um, I'm filming this the the night before on the Thursday night. Um, very, very humid day. I was, I was hoping it would cool down by now because it's been very humid week, hot and humid week around here, uh, where I live. And so I was hoping a bit more cooler temperatures so the computer don't sh feel like it's struggling so much and all. But uh, no joy, sadly, which is a bit of a shame. Can't have it all, I guess. Uh, it's a lovely old run. Like looking at this, pretty much the very flat countryside. Um, to be honest, I, I don't often like. I don't mind running on uh, service express services along here. I I prefer if we we stopped um, at s intermediate stations. Um, so if we had to stop at uh, Shenfield or Colchester or Mangatree, you know, just stop at one of a few of the stations and then run along instead of just non-stop run. But I don't mind. Um, I know there are. Um, uh, I could drive a uh, class three two one all the way along and a complete stopper service all the way into Liverpool Street. It's just a shame that those scenarios are so long. You'll find I really won't uh, go for them because they're so long. And uh, just secondly, it just, uh, so it, the videos would be t too long, I would think, for what people would enjoy watching. And yeah, it'll get to a point where I just start feeling a bit I'm bored of this now, like running along. It, it, but then it all depends. Um, I know Armstrong Power is very good on their scenarios, so you tend to not lose interest as you go along. As it, uh, quite interesting, like, workings are happening around you. But then, you know, you could always be going along and just start getting bored. But I can see an amber light ahead, and that looks definitely on our line. Uh, so we have a train. Yeah, definitely. So there's the AWS. So we have a train in front of us. It's so allowed a little bit of braking force now. Let's slow us down because that's a single amber ahead uh, uh, again. So let's bring us down. Obviously, we are, we've got a train in front uh, that stopped at one of the stations ahead. And we're just catching it. Not long, just the, the last station then starting to speed up, and we're just catching them up very quickly. I think it's more they've stopped because these lights are not changing so quick because if they were speeded up the lights would be changing as well. But this will add a nice little run in on him. We'll be following this stopper service for quite a bit probably. As the last one was a single amber. I think I'll leave it at that at 30 miles per hour. So we don't want to be going any faster than that till we know what aspect is the uh, signal that we're coming up to. As you can see I've zoomed in the camera. I always find that weird that I've zoomed in the camera but I also find myself leaning forward in the chair to look. It's a bit funny. Funny one thing to do. Like it, it would make much of a difference me uh, leaning forward into the computer screen to see and if I sat back lay sat back on my chair like normal. Right, that is a um it's just turned to a double amber aspect, so we will speed this uh, express train back up. Obviously the train in front has started moving. near its tail but not too far. I would like to get a bit of clearance so we can speed back up. At least then when it slows down, we've got to be aware that this train's going to slow down a lot more now. There we go, 
like a clear aspect now. Uh, so we're going to be quite aware of that. Um, you probably find it would also stop at uh, uh, Chelmsford. It's surprising that we're not stopping at Chelmsford. We will be flying through there. It's uh, very weird that you, you turn around, you're on this service, and uh, instead of stopping in anywhere, um, anywhere on the journey from Epswich to uh, Liverpool Street, you just don't stop anywhere else. And uh, it is a funny one because normally you'd expect to stop somewhere in the uh, on the journey, uh, but not for us. Uh, we're just going to be running along. I'm not stopping anywhere. Another uh, DBSO there. In Anglia Railway Colours. A full uh, 86 and Mark II's in Anglia Railway Colours there. So, yes, yeah, so a bit nice little old rundown. That's one thing I quite like about this uh, route, like at the moment we're quite rural uh, outside, nice rural areas, but as soon as we start here in Shenfield and we'll start going into inner London and then it just gets in more interest and more services running, the lines won't be just this double track, it'll go quadruple track and you know, it, it starts getting really interesting. I do like that, I do like it when you're driving into London and you, you start seeing more traffic running. That's probably why I spend most of my time, uh, there's a motorway right beside us now, going along past. Uh, I do spend most of my time um, driving into London than driving out to London. Because I find it, I don't know what it is, it's a bit weird. I like seeing it getting busier as I come along in, but I don't like... But when it's busy at the start, I enjoy it, but when it starts dying out, because of course you're out here in the countryside and there's not so much services running out here, um, I, I don't know, I just find it, ooh, starting to get, you know, a bit relaxed and quiet and everything, you know, it just seems like everything is mundane, you know, to relax and starting to get a bit boring, you know, I'm sad to say about it, but in, if it's the same tempo through or start you going into a busier thing. I don't know, I just enjoy it more for some random reason. Right, that is an amber light in head, so let's, let's slow this train down. It's just going green, but we'll, we'll just coast on through now. Uh, we don't want to speed up, because the train in front is probably starting to slow down for the speed restrictions coming through uh, Chelmsford, so, and it probably will be stopping at Chelmsford. We're not far away. It's, you know, not far away when the motorway is beside us. I think that's the M11 beside us there. I could be wrong, it could be just be an A road, I'm not too sure actually now. But there we go, we are just running right beside it along right now. Hopefully, uh, yep, there is an amber light on the other side, our side. Green. It's quite confusing when, like I said, when you see the light on the other side, you're like, ooh, that's amber. And you're thinking, oh, better slow down, and it's like, oh no, no, that's not my amber. That's <laughs> if we were going on the reverse line. So just looking out for two ambers, but I can see an amber. I can also see a green. That is telling us to slow down now. The uh, speed limits are changing, uh, but that was the Warning board for 85, and of course we are doing 77, 76. The next one is going to tell us to slow down to 60, so we'll start doing our descent down to 60 now. Because we'll probably have to slow down anyway for the train there to be stopping at uh, Chelmsford anyway in front of us, because you're guaranteed it's going to stop. So there we go, we've just got, we've gone underneath 60 miles per hour, no, 57 miles per hour. We're just rolling along, we're not really putting any power, we're just coasting along until uh, we uh, pretty much hit, uh, before we, till we go around the other side of Charleston Station. 
it's really just to keep an eye on what the signals are showing us because we don't really want to um, start speeding up or anything. And as I was expecting, the train would stop at Charlesford and we can see a double amber right in front of us. So we'll start on a bit of braking force now. Single amber just ahead. But yeah, we're not quite nicely slowing on down. Probably also noticing this slight bit of lag occasionally on this, and because of course the star is starting to get more busier and everything as we're getting into London, so. You may notice that a bit more on the video, it starts lagging and more. I do apologise, it's just the computer's starting to struggle with the whole, whole running and all. Um, can't really do much about that unless I modernise the computer. And at, at the moment, I do not have the funds to do that. But, uh, yes, it's, uh, I've also been very, very busy times at the moment. Just see an amber light ahead, and that's going to be ours. Might be good worth if I put it into the reverser in, and we'll start notching it. The uh, Great Eastern uh, livery uh, 321. First, I believe, were operated them at the time. Because they introduced the uh, 380, which this now route comes with. Oh, I just cleared. I was just starting to slow down, ready f for the um, red light at the other end of the platform. Because the banner Peter was showing that it would have been red. Of course, it's now amber. Taking it nice and easy. The uh, viaduct to come, in, to come in over um, Chelmsford, as we've just gone through Chelmsford Station. Quite impressive. They, they built all these viaducts across. The speed limit's just gone up to 85 miles per hour. Amber light ahead, so but we won't speed up. I can see the light on her from that. It's still red. It's just gone double amber, so we will now start notching up. The train in front is starting to actually pick up a bit of a pace. So social so should we. So the uh, service ahead of us is only a semi-stopper and so of course it's stopping at a few stations but not all. Um, it's a semi-express of course. And of course we're just a normal express service. Let's have a quick look to see how far away from Shenfield. Only just over eight and a half miles and of course to London Liverpool Street uh, just over 26 and a half miles so still got a bit to go uh, looking at me uh, stopwatch on my uh, computer it says it's 39 minutes have gone by Still got another 20 minute run to go on in to uh, London Liverpool Street. So not so bad. Uh, quite an enjoyable little run this is going to be. But like I said, I hope everyone else enjoys it. Like, like I said before, these scenarios where they build up now as we get closer into London. It's, I do love these 
like these routes that a commuter ones. Um, I love to have the um, the Chatham mainline route. Uh, not long came out by uh, Dovetail. That would be a good route to have. Uh, I just haven't got that yet. I'll probably wait for it to come onto a steam sale or something, something like that, and uh, purchase it. Still, still following our ambers along. The light ahead only just gone double amber, so we won't really speed up yet. Gone green. Let's start notching her up now. Oh, wrong button. Still only 85 miles per hour. I didn't think it had gone up higher than that. So we won't notch too much because we let the uh, we don't want to overdo the speed limit off the line. We cast out start scene and we uh, we're getting a nice green light as it on the other side just went from green to amber so obviously there is a train coming on the other side of the line I think they would pin all those lights to red uh, instead of letting them change uh, as they are automatic so maybe they just leave them as automatic but of course it's there for in case you have to do reverse running the lines. Let's the trains be able to do that. Well, the next light is green, so obviously nothing coming yet. I can see a train coming. It's quite funny that, that was remaining green as there's a train in its section. Of course, that was a livery that's starting to disappear in these days. Uh, very all about everywhere and starting to fade away now as privatisation came, comes along. Pretty much similar to the intercity colours. Which I have to admit, I was always a big fan of the intercity colours. I did love those. the intercity services, so like all the old HSTs and the uh, 225s, so pretty much in class 91 with Mark IVs and a DVT, uh, there was something quite stunning, and they were also on the class 90, and, on, and these too, the 86, I, I, you had them on the 47s as well, for the cross country services, um, yeah, they were something quite special delivery on them. Throttle up a bit. 321 looking like it's coming into the station to stop. It's been pretty much express through. Right, next station stop will be Shenfield, so we haven't got that far to go for them. And then we know we're starting to come into the inner belt of London. Which is uh, quite something. Yes, uh, like I said, I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see... Uh, these, the new trains that's going to be running on these lines. Um, I don't know if they, I guess they might do, like improve the speed limits along these lines and, um, and services along them, you know, just so that there's not so um, lit 
digital services run along here and you know more frequent and and all but you know it'd be interesting to see see how it's going to go along like they have a plan how it's going to go now if it's going to be like they say on a plan or otherwise well that's a different story you know that's one of those things that one it could happen it could not uh, just just have to wait and see right we have the speed restriction board which means tells me we are going to come into Shenfield I can see an uh, amber light double aspect amber lights just gone green uh, so the train in front is probably going to be stopping there so that's why I've pretty much accelerated off I've put the reverse into neutral as we uh, as we coast along here and there's an invisible bridge then <laughs> Uh, I can see us maybe have to slow down just to for a service for the service ahead maybe stop. I guess it might stop. It might not. Uh, I guess if it was going to stop, we start having the warnings a bit further down because it's near enough. We've got this little curve kink there, but it's pretty much straight to this little bit of line here. I can see it uh, double amber light ahead. Start putting a little bit of braking for us in now. It's just gone green, so I'll cancel that. As we are running it quite nicely at 62 miles per hour. The light ahead tells me yeah, we're going to go through platform 2 through Shenfield, which is correct. As we can see through here, this tells us we should be going for platform 2. It's just going to go past the next light. All green, of course. Now, I'm not going to speed up because this is going to be where I'm going to be saving this at the start of the game. I just have a light just turned to amber then. Uh, as it game will recommend in a sec. Uh, so, but I will jump cut that. Hello driver, to ensure the simulator doesn't crash due in the memory issue, we recommend you save for this scenario, restart the sim and reload. Re restart the simulator and reload this scenario, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to jump cut to that, so you would just see as this is just a normal little jump cut. So be back in a sec. Like I just said, a little jump cut, back again, uh, driving this service. Like I said, we're going to do a quick little jump cut, just so we can uh, just clear all the uh, memory on the graphics card and uh, come back just as it recommended. And of course we have saved it back then yeah, at the time as well. Right, as we are going a bit slow at the moment, let's speed this train back up. Well, but actually, it might help if I put it in fo forward reverse and start notching her back up. As we can see, we can go up to 90 miles per hour now. As we're only doing 51 miles per hour, so let's speed her back up. We've got about 20 minutes left before we come into London. Uh, as we can see, we're supposed to come here at uh, 08. 43 ETA, uh, that's not moving down as quick as everything else, uh, the miles, so obviously we're going to be affected by a train in front of us, probably more traffic, so, uh, and of course we may also see a bit of lag spikes because of that, uh, I do apologise again, because uh, that's just the computer um, struggling to perform a little. Uh, it's quite eerie, I just looked out the window now and there's a full moon out there and it's just peering through like there's some it's starting to overcast out there and you can see the clouds appearing and there's a moon, a very full moon uh, peering through the uh, the clouds. It's very, very eerie. Uh, very interesting thing to see at this time of night. But yeah, it's late at night really I'm filming this. Um, I, uh, it's just gone past ten past eleven so this kind of tells you how late I'm doing this video. Never 
express service going by. And it has an intercity uh, 686 on the back. It's funny how we were talking about them earlier on. Than 
anything else. I, cause the videos I had on here before were very much all train based anyway. So I know my fan base on here is going to be trained anyway. Yeah? So I, I'm not going to be saying like, oh, you know, I expect loads of people to watch it because of this. But I'd, I'd like to ask if um, you're a truck simulator, if, uh, if anyone here would like me to do some videos on that. And, and if so, also comment below on this video if you can, please. So I like, or even on my uh, Facebook page or something like that. Um, or even tweet me if you like. Uh, just to see what people would like. Um, uh, if you would like me to, uh, because I've been, I have been playing it a little bit uh, occasionally when I've had a bit of spare time uh, lately from packing and everything. Um, if you would like me to, even if you do want me to do it, yes or no. And also, do you want me to start a career, a brand new career? Now, bear in mind, I'm very, the career I've got at the moment is a very infant career. Like, I've not long bought my own truck. Uh, I think I'm only uh, level rank 10. It's not really high person at all. I've explored a bit of that, but not a lot and everything. So, I, you know, I wonder what people would like me to, if you would like me to just go from that level on and go up, or would you like me, if you did want me to do the Euro Truck Simulator, start from the beginning and work our way up and, you know, we can, all of us together can experience climbing up in the whole uh, uh, ranks of the Euro Truck Simulator. But if you would like to, if I would love it if people let me know what they think of that and all, uh, you can just put in a comment below on this video telling me. Uh, as well, I'd be much appreciated because uh, I'd like to know what people would like to see and uh, and all on videos, uh, especially what that I can pull out. Because it's not just me that um, these I do for the me the videos are for. It's it's also uh, everyone, you lot of people that's watching this. That, you know, this content is for, allows you lot. To enjoy and obviously enjoy watching this. Uh, this all for the only people that watches my videos, even likes my videos, even put, give me a comment and I do I do try and reply back to comments as much as I can, especially on these uh, simulator videos because it's been a hell of a change from what I've been doing for years on years. I used to video normal trains running and I moved to this like simulation world and also you know it, it's changed from one to the other. Uh, so I know how much of a big change it has been uh, from the other, and I know the viewers have gone down from what I used to have, but they're starting to build back up, and I, like I said, it, it's not just me that these videos are for, I, it's also you lot that enjoy watching the videos, because it also helps me. I like seeing that people enjoy watching these videos, giving me the likes and the comments, it, it just shows people do you like what I've been doing, and it ke keeps me spurred on to keep bringing more content out and buying you DLC a kit quite often and, and you know just to bring it all in for you all to enjoy so yeah I'd like so for those people that do uh, comment on the videos and even uh, just does the, uh, do the, the thumbs up when you watch the videos I, I do appreciate it a lot thanks a lot for that and just keep going and more more people that watch this channel and more viewers we have on this channel it just builds into a better community I like I'm quite uh, I do love my simulation games but I'm trying to be more um, kind of like uh, like the very community is uh, kind uh, as your normal videos uh, for like either diesels or steam but generally that's what I did a lot of but even like the model very community very tight very tight, uh, friendly community, and one that uh, you know would always support a very good community base kind of style. And I'm hoping a lot of what I do in the videos would uh, help that out and make people think, yeah, this is what we would want. Uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm just hoping, like, just seeing how people would like and everything. So that's a so that's a like question then for you all uh, and please don't like I said please don't hesitate to comment below uh, if you think I should if you'd like me to do some Euro Truck Simulator videos um, and also uh, you know.
know, that, you know, it may not replace City Emotions 2, because there may be quite a few people here that do want me to keep doing City Emotions 2 videos, uh, or s something on the basic line of that, and so I'm happy enough to just put them on a different day, and so you would have three videos a week instead, but uh, like I said, I would like people to just let me know what you'd like, like to see, because uh, that also just helps me out, makes me think, plan how I'm going to put these videos and do everything, and, uh, you know, one thing I would love to do um, is another thing I've been thinking about as well, but I think it's going to be more coming up to the, um, coming up towards Chris Christmas time maybe kind of thing, style, more in the winter little project, I may, it, and it, it all depends if I can get the computer working nicely. Um, and much more smoothly, but I, I've even been considering doing live streams and also, but like I said, that's uh, we'll uh, wait and see kind of thing on that because um, I, I don't think the computer can maybe cope, but it may struggle a little. And I don't want it to look a bit uh, just tedious, and of course, I don't know, I, you know, I do have a uh, it's double amber lights, let's slow us down now. Uh, I do have a Twitch account and everything, so, you know, it's not like I would have to make up a new Twitch or make it something like that or anything like that. You know, I probably would do live stream on Twitch because one, I may even put some videos from there onto YouTube like this, but I, I, because I, I don't know if people would really want to watch like something that's two hours long or something like that video uh, on YouTube um, for just the fun of it as you know on Twitch you may watch that as we go along and yeah play Train Simulator or even a few other games but uh, yeah uh, like I said we I thought I'll, you know that'd be a little f that's a future project to be honest so don't get your hopes up that that's going to happen right away or soon. Uh, that's, like I said, uh, that's a future project of mine. Right, it's slowing down now because, of course, I'm guessing we, the train in front of us has probably stopped at uh, Stafford for sure. And so we're uh, slowing down and also you'll probably find we've uh, got to wait for a platform available to go through. Because we're not stopping now. We're nicely crawling along now on the main line. As we just went past a single amber, so the next light will be a red. So we can see a station ahead, so it's going to probably be on the other side of the station. So we'll, we'll keep our speed down quite a lot. Because we'll probably have to stop at the station, but um, I'll try to avoid as much stopping at the station as long as I can, even if it just means we roll up to the light a bit better. See the red? Oh, that's on the other line. Probably the other line. One of these other lines here yeah, is for the other line. I thought it might have been our red. It's a bit obscured by the bridge, to be honest. I went at the station. I think that's Mainland Station in front of us. Uh, probably see when we get close. See on the uh, station boards. Where we are arriving into. The train being more of an express than we are, flying past. Probably, probably enjoyed that one. A bit, a bit, I wonder if they do do that in real life. Like, uh, I know they, the slower trains will overtake the f expresses occasionally. I wonder if the drivers on those quite feel like, yeah, I'm going past an express train. You like, you know, you spend most of your time always being taken over by s trains like this, like the express, and then you overtake them. I wonder if they feel really happy, and, like, yeah, like a wing kind of style. You know. A bit of a funny thing, because it's something that, you know, I suppose you spend most of your time being them overtaking you, and you've just done the opposite to them. You've overtaken them. Shut the reverse down. That's where we're only coasting along quite slowly. A bit of lagging spikes, as you can see occasionally. Quite a lot, quite often on this video and uh, in this area for the, on this route. Uh, like I do, like I said, I apologise for that. 
AWS ramp coming up now. There you go, the station signs, Mayland. Just rolling all through pretty much. See the light now just come on. You think there'd be a repeater around here because that is a hard light to see, to be honest. Another train on the uh, slow lines overtaking us in Network Southeast Colours. Oh, that had lagged a little. Right, we just got an amber. So let's start putting a bit of power on. Train going past. Three, two, one, going the other way. Going to go through platform nine. Obviously, that came out of platform ten. <laughs> Just gone green light showing ten. But we managed to not stop at the station then. Just rolled on along through. Never. It's a bit weird, like being on this train, and which is really slow. Like, I know what it's like being on when you be on a train, and uh, when you're on a on the more of the quicker ones, and all of a sudden you notice yourself going really slow and crawling along the lights. You always feel like yourself going, oh, "What are we doing this? Why are we going this slow?" You know, feeling it's quite tedious uh, and all. You think, "Oh, come on, speed up." Clear to go continue on. So let's start speeding this up then. Ah, you thought you had that win earlier on, mate. You stopped. We're not. We're going on through. Wonder if we'll catch up that train that shot past us at the start. But very infant stage. The uh, press room there pretty much of the uh, Olympic Stadium uh, where the London Olympics was and it's the stadium and I think it's called the Elizabeth Park these days but uh, I think it's something like that. It's a football stadium now, the, the old Olympic Stadium. So there we go, there's the, that was the where the London Olympics were. Just the lights only just static, still keep changing it in front of us. A few trains coming up past us now. Just in between two trains there, that was quite interesting. Express on one side, the stop on the other. see any speed restriction changes. That's the warning telling us the speed limit is going to go down to 16. Pretty much shut off now and let us just roll along. See the gherkin just in the distance. And the, uh, the, uh, one, uh, the bank in the, one of the towers in, the, in London for the banks. It's Lloyd's Tower, I believe. Something tells me it's that. Just see right in the corner on the left over the, by the houses. Lights now, so let's start on a little bit of braking on now. Let's temper our speeds down to the uh, signals ahead of us. Let's 
single amber and telling us the speed limit will be going down to 40 miles per hour. Oh, we're catching that train that shot past us earlier on. Was that a different one coming the other way? No, that's one coming the other way. I thought we were catching it up then. Most of the passengers on this train is getting ready for you always get that. Uh, I don't know if anyone, probably find a lot of people here have seen it. It's, when you come into a really busy station or terminus like London or something like that, you always find people about way before we actually both coming in, like so about nowish or even earlier when we were going from Shem through um, Stafford. Stafford, seeing people starting to get up, get their suitcases, and start walking and waiting at the doors because like, they don't want to queue up, pretty much. Uh, to uh, go in such a rush to continue on, to go on with their day, uh, I always find that very weird. Like, and uh, you see it. Like, I've seen it a couple of times when I've come into Birmingham New Street Station before. I'm thinking, well, you got ages. You know, and the train goes like ten miles per hour coming in there into Birmingham New Street Station. You're like, you may as well sit down for the enjoy the seat for a while longer. Well, that was a short-lived laugh at them, but then, yeah, he is driving with no doors on the middle coaches then. Which, <laughs> that's a bit of a glitch. I can see a train going across in onto our line in front of us there. So obviously that's what we're waiting for, but we're just rolling on up into these red lights in front. Come on, we're supposed to be the express train here. Right, just gone amber. Got amber two. So speed up a bit. We'll keep our keep our speed in con in control though, because you know we'll probably be slowing down for stuff. And uh, as a there's a 40 mile per hour speed restriction just coming in force now. I hope the video isn't too bad, because uh, I know it's quite a bit of lag, and maybe it's just me noticing more things, uh, but yeah, I'm noticing the lag a bit, spikes are appearing in this video, quite a bit, uh, well, in this, uh, <laughs> while driving this train, so hopefully it's not so bad in the video, but I do apologise if it is. Double amber. I'm building just spawn in there. Another tower block. Well, not tower block, another uh, skyscraper. Down lovely down into the uh, station. And keeping everything in control, of course. Because it would have been like a little. Uh, Used to be a station nearby, uh, not far away from Liverpool Street. Uh, nearby, I think it was called 
Bond Street, uh, not Bond Street, Bow Street uh, station, uh, where, the, where the lines have just merged in, would have con gone there instead, and would have had different type of trains running along those lines and everything. And uh, yeah, it's a shame that that's no longer exist. Uh, that's quite, uh, quite something. Yeah, get, get a chance to read about that on Wikipedia. Um, it's very interesting. Stopping at this red, when I'm not going to have the luck of uh, running all through. I don't know, we may do. Yes, we do. Oh, very lucky though. Same thing with having my window open in this uh, windy weather at night. I just have moths starting to fly around my face then. It's a pain in the ass. Slow this train down to the 15 mile per hour speed restriction. Our speed limit coming up, as we can just see. And we're going to be pretty much coming in on time as always. Nice to see. I do like this little bit where it's just all of a sudden we just <laughs> wiggling through all these, for the, you know, the buildings above us, the trains do. But it's not many lines, to be honest, to come into the quite a lot of, quite a few platforms in the in this station. But yeah, it's quite interesting. You can see all the platforms down the other side there on the left and, and we're going on straight on in front. Uh, into the more of the older part of it. So yeah, taking it nice and easy. Very enjoyable journey to be honest, coming along in then. Anglia Railway livery uh, DBSO that and Mark two coaches. Right, let's start pulling a little bit of braking for ourselves now. Don't want to get too fast, hot headed into this platform. 0842 coming into 0843 in a sec. A bit too slow now. Never judge these brakes properly. It's just that lady's now overtaking us and walking. That'll do us nicely. First class. Full set of Anglia Railway. Uh, that train is uh, even the 86 at the front. That's going to pretty, pretty much do us for a sec. We're just going to pull up as close as we can to this signal ahead, to the light ahead of us, and let's put the brakes on. And that'll do us quite nicely. Open the doors. Now normally I would go outside the coach train, but I got a funny feeling that I could crash this because I tried that before and it look outside the train before on the 
around these and it yeah it did crash the uh, scenario the game so I'm not going to do that I'm going to keep it as it is I don't want to cause uh, problems of course of this whole thing but yes I hope you've enjoyed that lovely rundown the uh, uh, Great Eastern Main Line uh, it says compl scenario completed well done driver you made it that's you done for now so there we go that was that's it pretty much so if you've enjoyed that if you have so please don't forget to put a little like in the bottom in the video I do appreciate and also comment below like uh, like the questions I I've asked in the video like like I said about people think I should do some what do you think if I should do uh, Euro Truck Simulator and if I did do Euro Truck Simulator do you reckon I um, will uh, start off where I am in my career quite infant stage but I own my own truck or do you want me to have a brand new career and work my way through and we can you know pretty much go up the ranks and that or if people are not interested in it because like I said before I know most of the people in my um, subscribe to me are more trained people than anything else but like I said hope you've enjoyed that whole video so don't forget next Monday will be uh, City Emotions 2 probably remind you if you do watch that uh, don't forget the next weekend the uh, they'll be voting on my uh, Facebook page to work out if we should have keep it keep it or change map or whatever um, so keep an eye on that and like I just said then so you can follow me on Facebook via link below you can also follow me on Twitter as well so I hope you enjoyed that little run until next time bye for now